Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner steps aside, a term that I have used for a long time. It would seem repetitious to some to explain yet again what this is about, but there are those who need to hear it, perhaps for the first time. Channeling is not a takeover of the human being. It's a meld. And the meld is something that is not that unusual, not really. It involves what you already have activated to its fullest level. It involves what you already have activated to its fullest level. Now I'm going to get there yet again in a moment and bring this full circle. Channeling is not odd and unusual. It's just odd and unusual to you. Because a society that has its DNA only working at a fraction of its full potential will not be able to see beyond itself. You don't know what you don't know, and what I mean by that is you have not seen yet what the potential is of you. Oh, really. Some of you in this room are just touching the surface of an expansion that is amazing. It goes beyond the 3D of you. It starts to become a bit multidimensional, and that is unusual to you. But I want to tell you that being in 3D is what you get when your DNA is not working at full potential. As the evolution of humanity starts to occur, you're going to see more and more unusual thinking. It started years ago with the children. That was a precursor, a, a warm-up for what's going to happen. The children are going to continue to be the leading edge of those who are different. There is still another wave of children with a whole different name starting to arrive on this planet. It will have such a different concept of the way things ought to work. They're going to bring a more harmonious solution to difficult, if not impossible, problems. Things that you never thought of, they'll have. But meanwhile, the old souls of this planet, using the wisdom of the past and their akash, are going to start changing both themselves and the planet. We have mentioned this. This could be an extension of the channeling of yesterday, but I don't want to call it part two because it stands on its own. It stands on its own. Dear ones, you are magnificent. And in the human body that you have now, some of you are just starting to see more. Some of you feel that perhaps your awareness is starting to shift because things are starting to become more complete for you. There's a few ahas for you. And you're wondering, why now? And what is this? you're simply starting to awaken in a grander way than you did before. And why would that be? Because you have given an allowance in this new energy for something very special. Awareness levels are going up. That carries with it many things, including fear. Fear that you're a bit unusual. Fear that you might be losing it. <laughs> Because when you step into the multidimensional pond, it's very different. Very different. But it's happening, even in this room. 
It's not a new energy for you, dear ones. It is an energy that you're revisiting and remembering. You've been here before. I'm going to talk about that in a minute as well. Let's revisit something. Let's look at the history that you've just walked through. My partner has mentioned some of these dates in a timeline that is revolutionary. Revolutionary. The revolution is an energy. The revelation is that you are magnificent. 1987, the harmonic convergence. It was a precursor of what was to come. Truly, those who gathered around and celebrated that time didn't really know what was coming. It was almost like the beginning of the celebration of the awareness of the precession of the equinoxes was at hand. If you look at the timing of the precession of the equinoxes, we have said this before, we'll say it again, the astronomy of it, it's a 36-year window, 18 years up to the end of 2012 and 18 years out. And in that 36-year window, there is a grander potential of major shift than beyond it. And that is why there is some impatience when I say, it's time to move. You've got a few years left. You're in the last 18. You've used four of them. There's time left. And you're starting to take advantage of it. Many of you are starting to awaken to a slightly different reality. The one I've told you about last night is the reality that you deserve to be joyful. To love yourself enough to balance. And in that balance, you help the ones around you. If you're not in balance, you really can't do much. And that requires the wisdom of an old soul. 1987, just the beginning. You really didn't know what was coming. You weren't into that 18-year run-up. Not yet. You got close to it. Cryon comes in in 1989. My partner awoke with my presence and didn't understand it, didn't acknowledge it, came along very, very slowly. It was four years before we really understood it. 1993 was the year of the first Cryon book. However, January 1992 is with the end of the Cold War. That is when the Soviet Union ceased to exist. The disarming started of Armageddon itself. Take a look at the timing of this. 89 to 92, then to 93, it was happening quickly. The first Cryon book happened almost immediately after the Soviet Union fell over. And that is when I told my partner to release the information. There would be no Armageddon, and there wasn't. And there wasn't. And there won't be. My partner went to Israel. And he channeled me many times. But the one that really got to him when they took him to the valley of Armageddon where it was all supposed to start and end an ominous place the guide took my partner aside and he said this is not a place I want to be long the guide belonged there he was a citizen of Israel 
He lived in the land, and he said, this is a place that is dark. I hope we don't have to be here very long. The Israelis know. What a name. The Valley of the Armageddon. And I gave the channeling there, and I said, stand up tall and celebrate the fact that what was going to happen here never will. That's what you did. Then the run-up started in the 18 years going to the 2012 date of December 21. That's when the energy started to shift dramatically. There were many things because of the ripple of time and the potentials that had to fit into a scenario way before any of this took place. And now you understand the significance of those who would be doing things on the planet that would make great differences. Like putting together the former enemies all over Europe into one coalition of trade. Something that began as a trade organization and then became an economic wonder. The former enemies for hundreds of years sharing the same currency, dropping their borders. I'll say this again to you. Do you think the EU is a failure? You're looking at a 50-year miracle. And it has to be now morphed into something that is better than it was. And you're seeing the, the extrapolations of the issues there that don't work into something that may. And the answer to some countries is to leave it alone, maybe to drop out of it. Others to say, we can't have it yet. Others to say, we want it, but this isn't a failure. This is a recalibration of some, something amazing. You never did this, ever did this. Imagine putting together the strength of the enemies that were at each other hundreds of years. And suddenly they simply drop their borders and you just walk between them. That had to happen, dear ones, even before 1992, and it did. Fifteen years ago or so, the information of the Indigo children happened. All within the parameters here of that 18-year window into the middle. The indigo children are simply children of new consciousness. They think differently. They act differently. They are the first wave of the evolution of consciousness. You're going to see more of this. Last night I told you that the old soul's task at this moment was multifold. There's three things I told you. Go listen to them. In order to cancel what we would call the ripple of doom. That feeling that it's still going to fail. You'd be 16 years out of the date that it was supposed to fail. And everyone's still saying it's going to fail. That you will destroy yourselves. That you can't help it. And that's what humans do. Dear ones, that was the case. For over 50,000 years, that was the case. You've done it over and over. That was the case until now. Do you realize the barrier that you just crossed? Now, I want to tell you something that's going on. This is not a long channeling, because what I'm about to tell you is a profound thing. Let's start at the beginning. With the evolution of the human being, one of the things that's going to start to occur is that you will have an akash that starts to meld or join with your consciousness. It's part of growing up. A DNA that starts to become more efficient is one that's going to start working better. And working better means that it's going to start connecting as it always should have. There's a reason why you carry your past life information around. It's been discussed and discussed. 
The reason is, old soul, this shift. If you would make it past this, and you did, you would start receiving that which you learned from your Akash. In other words, the wisdom of the ancients that you are and that you carry, shaman, will start to manifest itself. And it's not going to do it with you walking around, writing books, working on stage, and being shamans and gurus. It's going to start in everyday life with masters walking the earth, taking care of their children, going to work, walking to the store, treating people differently, showing light that nobody has seen before. That's what's going to happen. Finding joy in their lives when all around there and all around them is not joyful. That's mastery. And that's what's going to start to occur. And it's going to start to be able to be done <laughs> because of the field. And we've told you this before. You have got something happening around you that wants you to succeed with putting things together. It's the new physics. It's the new magnetics that will come and help you. You want to know? Where this is coming from, it's coming from you. It's coming from the Pleiadians. It's coming from the, from the nodes and the nulls that were set here. It's coming from the crystalline grid. A scenario, a confluence of many things that are starting to come together right now for you. Many things. It's been a tough time for many, especially the last few years especially in the Department of Health and Joy and all of these things. Why don't we just proclaim the end of that now? The end of that. It's gone. These are old energies that are now not going to affect you in the same way. All the things around you may stay the same, dear one, but your countenance is going to get above them. And that's what the old soul does. That's what the mastery is all about. Claiming the love of God inside of you as the torch that is the light of the world. You. Now what happens when the Akash starts to meld with consciousness? The first thing is obvious. There will be remembrance of the past. We have gone through this. There are many channels. My partner is even writing a book. But there is something missing. What comes after that? And what comes next? How far does your Akash go? Well, you would say, well, probably to the very first lifetime on this planet. You'd be right. We have talked about something briefly that is extremely esoteric and not understood. It shouldn't be. It is something to do with what I will call the accounting of souls on the planet. It's called the cave of creation. The metaphor is that each of you has your own crystalline, you might say, peace of God in there. We told you before that all the souls that ever would be on the planet are already there, ready to be awakened and born. Now, that's difficult. That sounds like predestination. It is not. It is potential. We also told you that each time you come and go, you visit this esoteric place, metaphorically. And the lifetime you had and everything you did is etched into the crystalline that is you. Hard to describe this because everything we're telling you is in metaphors. It is not linear. And then we tell you you come back and you pick up that lifetime and all the others. The crystal is a metaphor for remembering and it's put into your DNA. That's part of the Pleiadian system that they put here. 
It's so that you can remember and store the past life information and here you come into the planet with, with DNA that doesn't work well and it just sits there and it just sits there and it just gathers there. Some of you feel some of it but you're not really sure what it is. And now that's about to change. Now that's old information. What could be new? Now I'll tell you what's new. You see that whole system is being recalibrated because you made it past the shift. It's part of what the crystalline grid is doing because the cave of creation lies within its field. I don't expect you to understand that, but I will tell you this. We have not said this before. Your Akashic record is now growing. And it's going to start to include where you came from before you got to earth. Now, where do you think you came from? Dear ones, I would like to introduce you to your past. When one planet seeds another, the well of souls come from the planet that seeded you. You were Pleiadian. It's why you're so comfortable with four layers of Pleiadian DNA. You did this before. The souls in this room are so old and there have been so many planets that you've done this before. Now what happens when your Akash starts to awaken to a greater reality? A, real, a reality that is simply beyond Earth. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we're really not. What does the Akash feel like when you start to sense it? It's not linear. You're not going to get names and faces. You're going to get feelings, intuitions, dreams. If the Akash starts to get large, for instance, if it includes your life on another planet before you got here, what did I tell you about the Pleiadian civilization? Briefly, I told you about the seven sisters, those nine planets that you see seven of. They have a civilization which is very, very old. Yours is very, very new. They've had a million years under their belt since they passed their marker, which was not a wobble, but it had to do with the stars. It always does. You were them. What do you think you learned before you got here? That is going to start to be felt, sensed, intuited. You won't recognize it. You won't know why. But here's how it manifests itself. You'll start to look at things and remember that you can control them. You wonder why you can't now. You start to expect things that are beyond anything a human being can currently do. And you'll wonder why you can't do it now. You'll see a failing body and you won't accept it because of what you could do before. And that starts to influence the 4D part of DNA you have now. It starts to then talk to that which is this planet instead of the last planet. It's going to enhance healing. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it. What happens when a human being looks at themselves and sees one thing and knows another? When you're told this or that and you know better, because you know that in another reality, in another planet, you are able to do something. And that your whole body is saying, you should do it now. And there will be those who do it now. Because you carry in wisdom, knowledge, and a time when your DNA was working at 85%. 85%. When you could wish yourself somewhere else. When you become multidimensional any time you wanted to, where you could live for centuries if you wanted to, where you could disappear into the cosmos and be part of it if you wanted to. 
And some of you are going to feel that. In other words, the mastery that you think is beyond anything and only reserved for a few, you're going to realize is still there and inside. Everything that ever was is inside your DNA. It's simply a matter of going and getting it. The idea that you have to work for something to be implanted into you is backwards. You may have to work at something to release what you have. It's already there. Everything is already there. Why don't you go get it? What happens with the human being is very interesting. Your brain, your heart, your pineal are all working together along with the field that wants harmony. And it starts to open boxes in your mind, in your consciousness, that allow you to do things you didn't think you could do. Now there will be those even old souls that say, well that sounds great but not me. And you know what? It won't be you. You just told your body you're not interested. The more you deny it, the more your body will cooperate with the denial. Do you understand this? If you're not on board, your body will say, you're not on board. In other words, your consciousness becomes king. Whatever you visualize and verbalize for you becomes you. That's how important this is, this, this message that I'm giving. What do you want to do? What do you really want to do? How would you like to live longer without the pain? Without the suffering? And instead have energy and joy? Is that what you're telling your body? Or do you look in the mirror and say, woe is me? And your body says, woe is you. Because <laughs> it will cooperate with whatever you give it. These are special times. There are times filled with more black and white than you've ever seen before. Have you noticed that your emotional ups and downs are getting larger? Have you noticed there's really no more fence sitting anymore? Nobody can keep secrets in the government anymore. You're having things exposed right in front of your face. You can see the white hats and the black hats very clearly. That is going to increase. And with that comes exactly what I'm telling you. Your body is listening. What part are you going to play, dear, dear Pleiadian? What part are you going to play in the ascension of this planet? Start now. What are you telling yourself? What are you telling your body? What are you telling others? And I want you to watch something that you wouldn't expect. The more you verbalize the magnificence that you are or what you are, not what you want to be or not what you wish to be, the more you become it. The more healthy you, compla you, you complain about that you're not, you won't be. The healthier you say you are, you will be. This is because the body is simply sitting ready to obey the commands that you're giving it. Let me tell you something. You are in charge of everything inside you. Everything. Do you know what spontaneous remission is? It's the body listening and doing what it's told. Are you ready for that? You can control it all. You always have been able to. But now the Akash is starting to awaken and remember a time when all you had to do was think about it and it happened. That is a very high consciousness with incredible power. That is what is starting to occur. The Akash is actually starting to recalibrate to include past planetary experience. And this is going to cause some frustration in some of you because you'll look at things and you'll say, why can't I change them? Because you remember you used to change them. That helps you to cognize what is possible, what is doable. 
instead of looking at things and saying, I can't, I can't, I won't. Instead, it'll say, you used to. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. You sit on the cusp of major shift. Don't watch your news because it will tell you differently. The news is still stuck in the rut of doom, just like the films you see. I told you last night, be prepared for some new script writers, some new films to talk about the magnificence of the society called humanity. Writing stories around the shift, really, in ways you've never seen. You see, it's coming from new consciousnesses that were not part of the doom cycle and that have disengaged themselves from it completely. This is the new human. Get ready for this. It's going to happen slowly in various ways. But get ready for dreams. Dreams that you can't explain where you can fly. Dreams you can't explain where anything that you can visualize can happen. And that you then have an example and that others will look at you and say, how did you do that? And you would say, I just activated what I already have. And you do too. A catalyst for light on this planet. That's what you are. Brian, you always give such uplifting messages. When are we going to see it? How about now? You're looking at God and saying, when are we going to get it? How about now? I'm looking at you and saying, when are we going to get it? We're going to get it when you cognize it and produce it. That's when we're going to get it. All of us. I'm part of the us. I'm crying in love with humanity. Watching a shift I've seen before. You did too. And that's in your Akash, dear ones. The last shift you went through, oh, a long time ago in another place, it should ring with you. It's here again. It's here again. It's here again. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. The world is poised on some beautiful changes when you get rid of the old cycles. Dark will eventually lose. You'll see a different kind of thinking. It's not going to be a Pollyanna earth. It's going to be a wise earth. There will be disagreements because there will be different levels of wisdom. <laughs> but it doesn't include killing each other. That's where you're headed. If you will pick up the gauntlet and create it. That's the message. It's a big one. That's what's going on. There'll be more.